Hey guys, it's Ian here. I'm going to present a two-part uh, video series for you uh, discussing the previous Hopi worlds. This part one, I'm just going to read through the description of the Hopi worlds and in part two, I'm going to offer my insights into what I think it could mean for us and some connections to cross-culture ancient history. So here's the description of the previous three Hopi worlds and the one we currently live in. The first world was called Tokpela, Endless Space. The first people understood that although they had human parents, their real parents were the universal entities which had created them through their parents, Father, Son and Mother Earth. Each learned that they had two aspects as a member of an earthly family and clan, and as a citizen of the great universe. Gradually, the first people forgot to respect their creator. They began to use the vibratory centers of their body, their chakras, only for earthly purposes. They began to perceive differences and separation between people and animals, and between different ethnic, linguistic and religious groups. The animals began to draw away from people. The first people began to divide up and draw away from each other. They became warlike and fought. The first world's fatal flaw then was forgetting the unifying oneness of all creation. But there were a few in every group who held to the original spiritual enlightened path. These were directed by spirit to migrate to a special underground location. Then, the first world was destroyed by fire, volcanoes erupting and fire raining down from the sky, until there was nothing left but the few faithful people inside the earth. After a long time, the world cooled off, and a second world emerged. There was land where water had been, and water where land had been. When the faithful remnant emerged from the underground, there was nothing to remind them of the previous wicked world. They emerged into the second world, Tokpa, Dark Midnight, a big land. The people spread across the land. They communicated telepathically, but this time the animals stayed apart from them. As the second world people developed material goods to barter, they became greedy and traded for things they didn't need and became avaricious. They began to quarrel and fight and wars broke out. The second world's fatal flaw then was absorption in greed and materialism. But again, there were a few people who kept faithful to the path of spiritual awareness. And again, spirit directed these people to go to a safe, underground place. Then spirit commanded the twin entities who safeguard the earth's north and south poles to leave their posts and stop keeping the earth from properly rotating. The earth teetered off balance, spun around crazily and rolled over twice. Mountains plunged into seas with a great splash. Seas and lakes sloshed over the land. Then the world became cold and lifeless and froze into solid ice. Eventually, Spirit ordered the polar entities back to the ends of the Earth's axis. With a great splintering of ice and a shudder, the Earth began rotating again. The ice melted and the world warmed to life. Spirit created the third world, Kuskurza, meaning lost over time. Arranging land and seas mountains and plains, and all forms of life. Then Spirit sent a message to the few faithful people underground that it was time to emerge. These survivors multiplied and created great cities, even countries, and a whole civilization. But then they became completely occupied with their own earthly plans. They created craft shaped like a shield that could fly and used them to fly to big cities and attack them. Soon many peoples and countries were engaged in aerial warfare. 
these third people were also engaged in degraded sexual practices. The third world's fatal flaw, then, was misusing flight for aerial warfare and misusing sex for promiscuity. So spirit directed the few people who lived according to wisdom that they should build vessels and store food in them. Then rainwater was loosed all over the earth. Waves higher than mountains rolled in upon the land. Continents broke asunder and sank beneath the seas. Meanwhile, Spirit directed the faithful survivors to travel first to one, then to another island, until finally they reached the fourth world, to Akachi, complete world. After they had hopscotched across the islands to arrive in the fourth world, those islands sank into the sea. That fourth world is the present world we live in. The survivors spread across the broad lands and gradually began building up the high civilizations which surround us today. Since this fourth world is the one we have grown up in, we are aware of the behaviors of those in it. It can accurately be said that, after an initial time of fidelity to the path of wise consciousness, many have fallen into the low level of consciousness. In fact, it can honestly be stated that many people of this fourth world have fallen into the fatal flaws of the three previous worlds, forgetting the oneness of all creation, sinking into greed and materialism, and engaging in promiscuity and aerial mass warfare. But we have added an additional serious element, mass destruction of Earth and its ecological systems. Thus, the fourth world's fatal flaws are all of the previous world's ones, plus ecocide, the killing of one's own environment. Okay guys, that's it for part one. I'll be back soon with part two, where I will share some insights into the connections that I've made uh, between these previous Hopi worlds and some cross-culture ancient civilizations.